Hey guys, good morning. Uh, this is LaQueen here on the uh, South Side of Chicago. This is my second YouTube video, and um, I'm happy to be a part of the um, Dave Ramsey's Debt Free Community and also a Stacy's Flower Flowers fan. So um, I'm just enjoying my Saturday. It is February the second, and right now I'm listening to some good music. About to take care of some errands. Um, I'm listening right now to Jan uh, Janida, uh, Classic Man. <laughs> so, um, I, um, all right, just, uh, last night was my first YouTube video and, um, I'm new to here to, I'm new here to the city of Chicago. And so, um, you know, I'm not rich, but, um, I am a woman. I am a black woman and, um, I, I also, um, you know, right now I do, um, have, um, you know, issues dealing with people and dealing with experiences that I went through back home in Texas and, you know, um, with relationships and moving forward in my life and jobs and, you know, instability and history of depression and bipolar and, and uh, you know, um, that's, um, that really hasn't held me back from from progressing in my goals and for being the person I am today. I. Um, I am currently a medical assistant. Um, I work for a couple major hospitals here in Chicago, Houston, and the Dallas area. I do have three degrees. So I have a, um, a medical assistant certification, a Purdue University um, <clears throat> bachelor's degree in Spanish, habla espanol, <laughs> and a um, associate's degree in uh, liberal arts in Spanish. But that's not, you know, I mean, since I made the move here in Chicago, my life has changed. And dealing with, you know, with uh, the public and, you know, what I went through to get here, it wasn't easy. M being homeless and, you know, going from house to house and man to man and the journey that I went through, it wasn't easy. But um, ever since I made the steps here, um, Chicago, my life has completely changed. I got into school, I got a couple jobs here and there, and um, I just got back on my feet. So, um, you know, I am, I'm all about making changes. I'm all about more um, moving towards progress. And I used to be a member of the Potter's House uh, and uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes back and uh god i used to be a member of the potter's house from <clears throat> the old 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 building off of keith boulevard when he had the old church and the green carpet and the choir and and pastor chris and and the youth group and and uh you know the fire the fire group on saturdays so i've always been a part of some wonderful ministries in south dallas and oakland bible fellowship and ibot and then in fort worth with um calvary cathedral and um new beginnings and cornerstone and and then in florida with the river at tampa bay and um so i've always been involved in wonderful ministries but you know uh, people are people and people will hurt you no matter wherever you go and it, it can even be church people and so i've dealt with um, a lot of pain and a lot of hurt from church people over the years and that's what's really held me back from moving towards where i want to go so um i listened to some um tapes by uh td jakes and it really put me at peace last night because um i've deal been dealing with a lot of uh demons inner demons and um you know running away from myself and um you know uh his his um his, he has a wonderful ministry and um his daughters are also following in his footsteps as he gets older and i think that's amazing because a lot of the um ministers from the 90s and the, <clears throat> you know um joyce meyer and um you know when um <clears throat> Uh, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship and Pastor Ricky Rush and and Rodney Howard Brown and Paula White and you know a lot of the old school you know uh, pastors are getting older so it's time for a new generation to um, to stand up but you know what I'm, that's good and everything but I'm not gonna say that um, I'm a perfect Christian because I'm not um, I have fell down on my feet I've been homeless um, I've been you know in clubs I've been here I've been there you know I've been around but I know that God has me here for a reason and when I lost custody of my son um, back in uh, 2011 I was at a point in my life where um, I didn't have any focus I didn't have any goals and so um, <clears throat> 
you know, uh, my uncle, my uncle, he's um, he's in the Navy and Marines. He's just telling me to work through it, work through my problems, work through my demons, and you know, um, and um, <clears throat> you know, um, I um, I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect angel, but I was going through a really destitute time in my life where. Um, I was just trying to hold on to everything I had and I, I did, was dealing with a lot of problems in my family and not having a job and trying to get into school and, and there all the all the doors were closed being closed on me no matter what I did in Texas and then you know I lost my son I lost him in court I was in court uh, in the city of Houston for court for about two years I was in the city of Cook County in, in Houston court for two years and um, I tried everything but you know what um, I know God has a reason for everything he has a plan for everything so right now my son is safe and um, I'm happy but um, I just you know I don't want people to go through what I went through I don't want people I fell on my face on the street in Houston um, I was very depressed um, <clears throat> And then I got proof of public assistance. You know, um, I was crying every day. I gained like 40, 50, 60 pounds, uh, 60, 70 pounds um, in a couple of months. And, um, you know, I was very, very, very sad. And um, I was living in the rough side of, of Houston. And, um, and uh, I really couldn't control my emotions because I lost the love of my life. I lost the only thing that I had. And so he was six months old when I lost custody of him. And everything that went through at the hospital was really sad. But you know what? Um, I know that makes me stronger every day. So uh, my mom is has um, eight kids and she wasn't perfect either. You know, dealing with drug addiction and um, that type of environment where my my aunts and uncles have been in that type of environment, you know, and um, I mean, I'm not, I don't hate my mother for what she lived her life, but, um, you know, she suffered from that addiction and it cost her her life. And, you know, I'm, I'm her oldest child and I don't want to be exposed. I, I'm here in Chicago. You're exposed to uh, those environments every single day. You're exposed to people on the street selling uh, weed and pills, and you know, uh, trying to get something out of you for a little bit for twenty dollars. You know, and it's just like that's this that's just the side of the city that I'm on, or it's just wherever you go. And so, um, I'm learning that the hard way. And um, I mean, you know, it's, it's common knowledge. Everybody knows it. It's it's not a secret. <laughs> It's not a secret. Everybody knows it. And, um, you know, I'm trying to deal with what I have because um, everybody in their family has somebody on drugs. Everybody in their family has someone in prostitution. Everybody in their family has somebody that's been in prison. You know, everybody in their family has, has someone that's been dealing with mental illness and stability because it's normal. But in the black community, they kind of want to put it under, under the rug, you know, and just like ignore it. But you know what? It's, you can't ignore it because they're your family members, they're your blood and they're, you know, they affect you and who you are. So, um, you know, I um, I don't hate my mother, but the life she lived, I don't want to. I don't want to live that out. I don't want to live that life. So, um, it's rough here because um, when I used to live in Los Angeles, Los Angeles was very wild. There were gangs everywhere. Even I was six months pregnant and got attacked by a guy on the bus. You know, and I mean. Um, there were gangs. Uh, Los Angeles is very wild. I used to live in San Francisco and go through the homeless system in San Francisco. And the dirty, dirty shelters, filthy, filthy shelters. And then my mother, she took me on Skid Row. You know, Skid Row is horrible. Dealing with those people in Los Angeles that um, that live on the streets and that survive in tents and that and that just do heroin and crack cocaine, you know. Uh, Skid Row, I've been to Skid Row. I've been to, um, you know, uh, filthy homeless shelters in San Francisco and Oakland, California, where people, it's just horrible. But you know what, I was protected by the grace of God. I was protected by the grace of God. And so being homeless, you know, you have to, you just have to survive. It's hard because you just have to survive. And so, you know, I mean, um, it's not easy, you know, 
it's not easy and you know when you look at that person on the street you just see a, a person that you know is just like poor and uh, filthy and dirty and uh, you know um, going from grocery shop to grocery shop has bags in their hands but you don't know what they've been through you don't know their story and so um, I had I had a heart of that because my mom she lived that life and it, you know, it got really hard with Skid Row because I just saw it. it was everywhere in Los Angeles. It was everywhere in Los Angeles. And so, um, you know, people are rich and, you know, they live in Los Angeles, but, you know, what do you do with your money? How do you help those people get out of that situation? You know, what can you do to affect those people that are living that life? You know, and some and, and the thing about it is some people they, they just want to remain in that life. They just want to stay. They don't want to change. They don't want to change. Um, so they're addicted to, you know, drugs. There's a drug crack cocaine epidemic all around the world in India and you know in Afghanistan and um you know, dealing with kids and child prostitute, prostitutes that are addicted to drugs in Afghanistan at like 12, 13, 14 years old. There's drugs all around the world in South America and Africa and all around the world, you know. So I was uh, gratefully protected by my dad um, being a single parent in Fort Worth, Texas, and he did his best to. He was he was a little bit over, very overprotective, but he did his best to protect me and my brother. Um, growing up as a single father, working two, three jobs, um, working at the church um, at Calvary Cathedral, and um, you know he protected us. But I'm glad for that because I'm glad he's supposed to. I'm glad he protected us from the streets. And I didn't learn the streets until I was about uh, 18, 19, 20, 21 when I um, went out of state to Howard University as a freshman, pre-med sports medicine freshman. And um, I fell on my feet because I was working two jobs and um, dealing with problems with my roommates and stuff like that. I just fell flat on my feet. Um, I didn't know that it would be so hard dealing with the weather and the elements and, you know, dealing with you know people in a higher social class than me and and dealing with the financial aid system so i fell on my feet because i didn't know how to do the streets and i'm not going to say that i was perfect but you know dealing with men and boy problems and you know just wild you know living wild but but i learned and i got my start you know um as a college student um, at Howard University in 2003-2004 so um I'm, Howard University is a wonderful school and um, um, I'm grateful for those opportunities. But um, you know what? It's right now. It's 2019 here, February, and um, I um, I'm, I'm very very happy to be here, in Chicago. Um, you know, safe and protected. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I can deal with what I got. <laughs> Um, I deal with what I have, you know, the streets are the streets, the streets are hard, and people say, everywhere you go, they always want something out of you. And it's very, very hard being a single black woman um, here on the streets of Chicago, because people can get anything out of you for a little or nothing of a dollar. And, um, you know, right now, um, uh, you know, I'm looking for a job at work, and it's really hard, but I just have to keep my face forward, and, you know, I'm not desperate, but, you know, I just have to be patient, very, very patient, and so every morning and every evening, I deal with my demons, I deal with my, my the spirit, you know, that's just constantly berating me, and just constantly peeling me down, putting me down, putting me down, you know what, but I just have to rise up every morning, and, you know, there's a slogan that says life is good. Life is good and life is good, you know. But um, <clears throat> I just, um, you know, dealing with um, what people in the streets and um, with job and people in my workplace and, you know, um, uh, just dealing with instability on my job and I'm always looking forward towards progress. My goals is just making progress uh, having a budget, uh, paying off my bills, my credit card, my loans, my student loans, uh, having um, a career. I'm 33 years old and I just want a career. I really want a career for myself. You know, so I really want to use these three degrees, three diplomas for something, you know, something. So, um, 
but uh, it's, it's right now snowy here on the south shore of Chicago. It's still snowing, but they said that the weather's gonna be a little bit better um, here in the city. And I also, what got me through a lot of my um, problems in uh, Dallas and Florida, so I was a part of this group, it's called uh, Celebrate Recovery. So it was part of this group called Celebrate Recovery and they have, it's just like Alcohol Anonymous, but they deal with people on addictions and, you know, um, problems with mental illness and depression and, you know, um, anxiety and codependency and things like that. And, you know, um, I love Celebrate Recovery. I need to get back into it because I'm still on step one, you know, uh, recognizing um, my, um, inner self so uh, celebrate recovery taught me a lot I had a lot of fellowships with people and I'm happy because it made me stronger the stronger person I am today so uh, excuse me guys I may say um um a lot <laughs> I may say um um a lot but you know I'm just learning how to work this um work this uh, YouTube thing <laughs> and also this is my very first iPhone I know I'm like what's going on this is my very first iPhone it's iPhone 6 so I'm a little old school I've always been an Android uh, uh, Android person but um, I'm actually locking this and I'm locking this iPhone uh, thing going on so um, you know I was gonna go to uh, Catholic Mass last night but uh, some things got in the way so I, um, but you know I'm, I am a Christian and I'm not gonna say that I'm a perfect Christian because I'm not you know and so um, I'm not gonna say that I'm a perfect person but I've you know I've, I've experienced problems all throughout my life and my innocence was taken away from me at a very young age and you know dealing with um, exposure to you know the adult industry at a very young age and and um, I, I try my best because my dad tried my best to uh, protect me cover me you know and and um, I was a you know kind of rambunctious little girl but I was always protected by the church and I was always involved in youth groups and things like that but um, you know celebrate recovery is my right where I'm at right now and Dave Ramsey and his cornerstone uh, foundational financial teachings also as a little girl at the Potter's house and woman that are loose I learned um, this this lady right here Juanita Bynum Oh, I need a bite them. Uh, and her ministry, um, No More Sheets. No More Sheets really got me through a lot of difficulties. And as a 16 year old girl, I first watched, um, God, I don't know if I was 16 or 14 when I first watched the, um, the, um, well, I need a bite them uh, video, No More Sheets. And that really changed my life. So, so right now um, I'm I'm learning I'm learning that all over again here in the city of Chicago. I'm looking for a ministry. There's a couple of churches here, Salem Baptist Church, and uh, there's also Pastor John Hagen, I think. Um, not John Hagen. Um, um, a couple of uh, churches here in uh, Chicago that I've been visiting. I'm a part of Salem Baptist Church, but I need to go a couple times. So. Um, you know, I'm not gonna say on here on this platform that I'm an innocent person and I'm perfect and holy and holy thou or whatever because I'm not. You know, I fell down on my feet. Um, I've been involved in, you know, relationships with men and things like that. You know what? But um, it's made me stronger. It's made me stronger for who I am today and dealing with bipolar de depression and anxieties and, you know, um, insecurities and fears. And I've been in counseling since I was. Um, <clears throat> I've been in counseling all my life since I was six, seven years old, and you know what? I'm not ashamed of it anymore. But be, but the 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 goal that I want to have becoming a nurse, or be, you know, working in the medical field as a medical assistant, you deal with people's lives every single day, every single day, and so you know the decisions that you make could affect somebody's life in an, in an instant. So I take that very serious. You know, I do take that very serious but also dealing with the pressures of your coworkers and the demands that they want in the workplace and dealing with a high, fast paced office environment. You know, um, I've worked in offices before. I worked in, ho I worked in hospitals. So um, in Chicago, I was a little bit uh, shell-shocked because 
um, you know, when the staff has shortages, um, the pressure is put so much harder even on you. And so um, I didn't know that would be that hard working in the medical field. So I'm actually having to learn that all over again and find another office or another hospital or um, another clinic where I can work at, where I can really use my skills to my advantage and really improve the office environment and work with my coworkers and my providers for the best solution that can, you know, at the end of the day, they can take care of the patient and I can also, um, you know, get things done at the office that need to be done. So I did get a, I did get a tattoo right there and what it is it's just that um i kind of you know i got it like it is a spare of a moment but you know i think it's kind of like my scarlet letter i don't know if you guys have read the book the scarlet letter where um a young woman who has a baby out of wedlock and uh the the town the public town is trying to figure out who the baby daddy is and um, she goes through a lot of issues with politicians and bishops and, you know, and uh, and her, she's also married, but she's also pregnant with somebody else's baby. And so, um, you know, I, um, I, I, I completely agree with that story. It's a very, very old book. <laughs> it's a very, very old, old book. And I, I, I was reading it. I do need to get that book and read it again because, um, you know, I am... You know um how my son is um <clears throat> i had him out of wedlock and um, i had to go through the court system in houston which was horrible because i had to list every single man who could have been the possible father for my son and i had to write it down and give it to the court it was horrible they wanted to know every single man that i slept with and who the possibility of that father was and and they called him and, they, and then I asked them, have you guys made any resolutions? And they said, oh, nothing has to be done. So um, I went through the court system in Houston for about two years. It was horrible, horrible. Um, nothing, nothing came out of it. I did everything, but nothing came out of it. But you know what? That's over with. I'm here in Chicago now. Um, <clears throat> but like the Scarlet Letter, you know, uh, she went through her, her public humiliation. She went through... She had the baby, she kept the baby, but she went through all that pressure, all that humili humiliation, being on the public platform, on the public square, just sitting there days and days and days and having to wear that scarlet letter A on her chest for adulteress. And you know, um, I completely agree with that story. I completely agree with that story because I do wear, you know, a uh, badge of shame everywhere I go everywhere I go you know it's because you know my mental illness or because uh, you know I'm black and young or because men want some out of me you know I have a badge and my spirit on me everywhere I go and, you know I'm tired of hiding that I'm tired of hiding it so um, you know I'm tired of hiding it so um, I don't want to be ashamed anymore. I don't want to be ashamed anymore. So, um, you know what? The Scarlet Letter is a really good book. And, um, you know, Why Didn't Get a Bite is really good. And also, um, so I completely agree with those women's um, stories. So, um, yeah. But, um, you know, guys, just continue to keep me your thoughts and your prayers. I'm also always watching Stacy Flowers' videos. Uh, Stacy Flowers reminding me of my cousin Sunny. <laughs> so much <laughs> uh, from Texas so um, hopefully I can have lunch with her one day um, I do have these bills bills <laughs> bills 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 I gotta pay I got bills I gotta pay Saturday uh, February the second so I just guys want to tell you a little bit about me but um, I don't want to be ashamed anymore about my story about who I am because it's only I'm only going to use that to move me forward. I just I just want to continue to move forward and you know what I got to let this started letter, you know, I got to let it out. I got to let these inner demons out. I got to let this public humili hum humiliation out. I got to just let it out cuz it's going to come out one way or another. So, um you know, um, I am here on the south side of Chicago. Um, it's not illegal to be on YouTube, is it? <laughs> so I'm here on the south side of Chicago. And um, guys, just continue to keep me in your thoughts and your prayers. This is La Queen. I'm looking forward towards making new opportunities in the city and traveling and doing whatever I can to um, 
to network and be with people. So, um, you know, um, it's a new day and I just gotta deal with these demons. I just gotta deal with them somehow. I'm tired of running, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of running. So I'm tired of running away from my problems. I'm tired of running. So uh, this is LaQueen, guys. I love you. Uh, peace and love. Continue to keep me thoughts and prayers for my family also. Um, and um, as I uh, move forward in my life. So uh, peace and love. Deuces.